today our forum program is Robert Hasse. And one of my staff members, I believe it was Alicia, was talking with Robert and she asked Robert, so is it, is it Bob or Robert? And I think your response, Bobby, was, depends how long you know me. So I've had the fortune of knowing Bob for probably about 20 years. He's been engaged in the Chamber's youth programs uh, several years back and has, has been a, a, a part of this community for quite some time. So Bob today is going to provide a portion of his day-long marketing workshop called Growing Your Business in the New Economy. Bob is a local marketing consultant and national seminar presenter who speaks throughout the country helping businesses grow and adapt in the new economy. He received his Bachelor's of Arts degree and, uh, from, and communications from Western Washington University. Immediately after graduating, he went on to work in sales, advertising, and marketing positions for several companies in the greater Seattle area. Eventually changing course, he opened clinics, excuse me, eventually changing course, Robert stu studied to be myotherapy and massage practitioner, eventually opening clinic clinics and medical offices and sports clubs in the South Puget Sound area. Would you please welcome Mr. Robert Hasse. My goal at this morning, uh, this afternoon, is to encourage you all uh, in your businesses, whether you're an employer, whether you own your own company, or work for a company, is to uh, help you in your business. And things have obviously changed. Um, all of us have gone through a lot of shifts, even in the last few years. Uh, and uh, I want to tell you a personal story that will help you realize that regardless of what you've gone through, um, it doesn't matter where you've been, it matters more where you're going. So seven days ago, uh, I was waking up at St. Peter's Hospital in the recovery room after having surgery on my mouth. And if you can picture Gulliver's travels when Gulliver's on the beach and the little poutines are holding him down with the ropes, that's my tongue right now. So I actually have stitches in my mouth holding myself together. I've been dealing with cancer now for about eight years. And uh, I had my 11th surgery last week, and chemo and radiation start soon. So that sounds like a sob story, especially when you're a public speaker and your tongue's kind of important for what you do. <laughs> but literally, I went to sleep uh, under the doctor's control, wondering if I'd have a tongue when I woke up. And so the sad news is they didn't get it all, and I get to have a, a fun road ahead. So thank you all for your prayers and thoughts. With that in mind, it doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter the stresses you've had in your business. The past is the past. What you do today and where you go from today on is going to make a difference for you. So I want to give you some um, insights. Does this thing work? Yay. Okay. On, oh, you changed my font. I'm just kidding. Um, on uh, some different thoughts on your business. And I want to start really simple. So forgive the simplicity of, of this, but sometimes when you think the most simple, that's when you get the most adventurous ideas in what you do. If I just give you a paint by number instruction book and say, here, we go do these things for your business, it's not going to work. <laughs> Deal? So, uh, I, you mentioned I am a massage and myotherapist. A massage and myotherapist, and uh, I teach physicians and therapists all over the country on how to fix people that are in pain and how to get them out of pain. And whether I'm teaching people on business or marketing or whether I'm teaching physicians or therapists, this motto is true that movement is life and lack of movement is death. Whether you're applying chiropractic philosophy or massage philosophy or marketing or business, if you still do the same exact thing, you're gonna fail. Your business is gonna die. You have to keep changing and changing it up. Did you guys hear this? This is really nice. Um, first, the bad news. The SBA says that half of all businesses will fail in the first five years. Inc. Magazine says 80% will fail in the first five years. Dun & Bradstreet says 37% chance of survival in the first four years and 9% will only make it 10 years in business. Um, the main reason they say that is because of lack of business training and understanding. And most people get into what they do because they're really good at what they do. But they're not really good at business per se. And oftentimes we don't have the left and right brain working together as a team. We're really good at what we do, whether that's finance or whether you're a, an artist or Whatever the case is, my daughter came to me and said, uh, Daddy, I want to go to college to be an artist. And uh, most parents would say, no, you need to get a real job that pays the bills. And I said, okay, honey, and what I want you to do is I want you for your culminating project to go to, to do a, basically a, a video and interview artists. And so she went through this whole process, and she interviewed artists and got through this process of making this, uh, this video, which she, she posted on YouTube. And 
she resulted, the result was she has to have a business understanding. Just because you're really good at making art doesn't mean you're good at actually promoting that and making a dollar at the end of the day. So um, as a business owners, regardless of what you do, whether you're selling advertising for a radio station or you're selling clothes or whatever you're doing, just because you're good at that doesn't mean you know how to make that, that work, and especially in today's economy. What used to work 20 years ago doesn't work today. Um, Benjamin Franklin said, if you, plan to, uh, if you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And as a side note, if you go to our website, there's some information, um, by the way, on, on your flyers today at growingyourbusinessintheneweconomy.com. It's a really short web address. But uh, there's a free business plan that I would like you all to download. So again, whether it's your own company or whether you're working for somebody else, if you don't have a business plan, you really don't know where you're going. And so just because you've got a product, I see so many companies out there that, that create a product and they say, you know, I'll hire a salesperson and say, here, go sell this. You know, they don't know if there's a demand for it. They don't know who the competition is. So if you work yourself through that business plan, it's going to give you some great tools. And it's really designed for most types of businesses. So that's, that's free for you. All right, some quick foundations. Oh, no. All right, so being good at what you do does not mean you're going to succeed. And business is business. Get trained, I mentioned this already. I'm going to skip ahead on a few of these things because I want to get to some meal and meat and potatoes in my time here. I've got a half an hour left. Um, or do I? 20 minutes, give or take? 20 All right. So whether, whatever business you're in, that's not really the business that you're in. So I spoke, I was the keynote speaker to the Professional Photographers Association of Washington and Bellevue here a few months ago. And, and they're, they're wondering why a massage therapist was speaking to them about, about marketing. And uh, long story short, I wrote a book and my photographer that to took my picture, uh, handed the book out to the people in the group, and they realized that regardless of what business you're in, it's, it's all about marketing. And as a, as a, th a therapist, you're, I'm selling a product that you can't see until it's done, right? So it's a service-based business. And so just because I did something great for your grandma or your cousin doesn't mean I'm going to do something good for you. And so selling an intangible is very, very difficult. And so if you're selling a service-based product, um, it's a difficult business to be in versus here, here's my gizmo. Do you like it? Do you want it? You know? So if it's a, a service-based business, we have to sell somebody on what we've done before, and hopefully we can do that again for them. But we're all in the business of marketing. All right, so let's get to the basic question. The biggest question I ask people in business is what is this one question is, what is success to you? And so you all want to be successful in business, but what does that mean? And it means something different to all of you. Maybe it's a certain amount of dollars in, in revenue. But if, that's, if, you're, if your expenses are higher than your revenue, that's not really success, is it? So the question is, what is it that makes you happy? And um, what was success to me was, when I was in college, uh, I had some pretty silly goals. And I was in school, I wanted to, this is date me, I wanted to have, have a Volvo 740 Turbo. <laughs> I wanted to live in Bellevue and own a home there, and I wanted to have a job that paid more than my dad made. And if I had those three things, then I was successful. Well, I had those three, three, those three things three years out of school. And I thought, well, now what? So again, what is success to you? And if you can, if it's a, if it's a number, great. But for me, it's more about what do you do in your, your community? What are you giving back? What, what difference are you making for those around you? And um, in this economy especially, people are going to ask you, why are you in business and what are you trying to do for me? It's not just about a product and it's not just about a price. It's about, about more than that. And the biggest thing I want you to understand today, too, is you have no competition. So when I was speaking to the Photographers Association, there were literally you know, 100 photographers in this room in this one class I was teaching. And I told them, none of these people, even in the same city, are your competition. I'm like, of course they are. It's like, well, no, they're not. So we're all, the question that comes down to, what do you do that's different? And if we're all have the exact same product, well, then yes, it is competition. So it's your goal to make your product different enough. And in our, in our economy, we've gotten it now is people want to see something different and something unique and make ourselves a niche marketer, make ourselves something that's so unique that nobody else is doing that. And if you don't become different, what do they compare you on? Well, it's price. So if everyone's selling the exact same shirt, I've been buying shirts since Larry was young. And <laughs> just kidding. I've <laughs> uh, that's exactly right. So, but, but if Larry's selling his, his uh, the excuse me, the guardsman, if he was selling the exact same shirt that everybody else had in town, well, then all you can compare is on price, right? And so if it comes down to price, you're going to lose. So you want to find out what is, what's different about your company and what are you going to create that's going to be different so when someone comes to you, it's not about the price anymore. Stop talking about price and start talking about what makes you different. So what do these two things have in common? This is, again, for photographers, but it makes my point. So these are, these are tools. So if I'm talking to a photographer and I want to help them grow their business, 
Um, and they say, you know, geez, I, it, it's tough. You can go to Costco and someone can buy a camera today that 10 years ago would have cost $20,000 for that same quality of camera. And, the, and photographers are nervous because they have competition, they think, that people can go out and buy the same camera they have and they're going to be out of business. And that's a wrong thought, is if you think that your customers can do what you do, you failed. Because you have to be so unique and different. You're creating a product. It's not the tools you use. We all use the same kind of a keyboard for our computer. What I do with my keyboard and what you do are probably two different things. Are you sending you know, emails to your friends or are you writing a book? You know, what do you do with the tools that you have? Um, now, when I was in college, we had this expression, is it better than pizza and beer? So let's talk about massage therapy. I talked to massage therapists and physical therapists and such. And, and uh, when I was in school, I'd go out and I'd buy myself you know, a new CD player or something. And my friends would go, dude, that's like six packs of beer and, and three pizzas. you know. <laughs> and we compare to pizza and beer. You don't have to have massage therapy. You don't need it, right? You don't have to have maybe what you have to offer in your business. People don't have to have that. But if what you have to offer is better than pizza and beer, they're going to buy what, what you've got. And if it's not better, they're going to buy pizza and beer, right? It's not a necessity. So what are you doing about your business to make it so unique that people feel compelled to have to have what your product is? Now, if it's food, yeah, people need food. Now, whether it's macaroni and cheese versus filet mignon, that's up to you to make sure you get that message across. But the question is, what is it that makes you unique and different and better than pizza and beer? All right. So back in school, um, I got in trouble at Tomwater Junior High. That was my platform I ran for uh, ASP president on. But they didn't have a student store, and um, there was no gum or candy. And so I'd go to the store, at, I, think, I forget, the Sprouts Rights or whatever it was back in the day, a few years ago. <laughs> you guys are going, dude, he's old. And, uh, and I'd buy this this brick of gum and I'd go to school and I'd buy it for 25 cents a pack and I'd sell it for 50 and I'd double my money and then the next day I'd buy more and I got called in the principal's office and he says you can't do that I said why he goes well you just can't I said is there a rule he goes well, uh, well, no so we eventually got a student store but the point is there was a demand for what we had and I fulfilled that demand who else has done that well you know in the years ago Starbucks was competing against a one dollar cup of coffee now they've convinced you that four dollars is normal for a cup of coffee Right? And so why is that? Is it, they just have a magical formula for, but they've convinced you that that's something you need. And so it's, it's still coffee, it's just a little bit different. So again, what are you doing in your business to make yourself so unique, people feel compelled to give you money and compelled to make your business grow? Um, I'm gonna tell a story really short. I was a, uh, got a paper out when I was a kid and uh, I got to learn to sell subscriptions and newspapers and I, uh, this is a long story, but I, what I found was is that I went to the door and knocked on it, and I'd say, hi, I'm Bobby Hasse from the Olympia newspaper. Do you want the paper? And they'd say no, and I'd say, okay. And they'd close the door, and my friend goes, dude, what are you doing? He didn't quite say it that way back then, but I said, well, what? He goes, they said no. He said, no, they said no to the wrong question. And so he knocked on the same door again. He said, oh, ma'am, I'm so sorry, but my friend doesn't know how to ask the right question. He said, would you like the paper? And she said, no. He said, why is that? She said, I can't afford it. He said, ma'am, you can't afford not to have the paper. And he started talking about the coupons and how it paid for itself. And oftentimes people don't know that they need what you have until you explain that to them. As a quote from Steve Jobs, I'll get to later on that, but um, all right, I'm gonna skip ahead. So fundamentals of marketing, I wanna talk about a couple things to help you out. So everyone in your company's gotta know your marketing plan. Just because you as the owner know it, does everyone in the company know it? Um, and every per person in your company is a salesperson. I went to, uh, you know, not to talk, pick on McDonald's, but of course I don't eat there that much anymore, but. <clears throat> So years ago, I was out in Lacey, and I'd buy my food through the drive-thru, and they had a nice little cover over the box and everything. And I was going through, six months later, the, the downtown McDonald's, and the wind, you guys know that horizontal rain we have in Washington State? So the window was down this much, and the rain was pelting me in the face, and I finally got up there, and she goes, just a minute. And I said, oh, gosh. And so I finally got to the front, and I said, um, uh, yeah, I replaced my order. And, and I said, by the way, I said, if you guys could put those little covers over the box, we wouldn't get wet when we placed our order. Now, Inside the company, on the wall, it says, you know, customers first, we want your input, we want your advice, please give us your feedback. But her response to me was, if we did that, we have to raise all of our prices. <laughs> what she didn't know was, I was friends with the owner at the time, and, and, and that, you know, she actually got demoted. I didn't mean to have that happen. But the point was, if you have a philosophy of the customer is king and we want your feedback, make sure your people know that. And whether it's the janitor cleaning up aisle four at your grocery store or not, they're all part of that sales team. They're all part of that group. And so regardless of what your philosophy is, regardless of what your business um, uh, plan is, everyone's got to be involved in that. So, all right, 
I'm going to skip ahead. So, um, customer service again. If they, if your customer business philosophy is, you know, the the customer, you know, we're, we we love you and we're we're a great company, we're hip and we're fun, but the person answering your phone is grumpy. That's not based on age. That's based on grumpiness. Uh, that's not a good idea. <laughs> So here's a question for you. Oftentimes, people, when they do research, is they say, you know, would you like our product? Now, if I said, would you like a Porsche? Yeah, I'd love to have a Porsche. The correct question is, will you buy a Porsche? Well, maybe not. So just because someone wants your product doesn't mean they're going to buy your product. So when you do research, you really got to find out what's the likelihood of someone buying it. And if they're not going to want to buy it, why is that? What do I have to do different? What, how do I make my product different and make it unique? Uh, I was talking to, uh, I shouldn't say it's in front of a room full of people with banks, but... Um, <laughs> Years ago, I said, you know, it's the most frustrating thing for a business owner to change banks. Oh, my gosh, you've got to have checks printed. You have to go through all these things and these hoops and so much things to get stamps made and all these things you have to do. It would be so nice to have a concierge to say, you know what, I want to change to your bank, make it happen for me, and just hand that off. And so that's a, it's an idea, for example. And so um, I'm going to get off on a tangent on the time for it. But the question is, if you have something unique, again, people are going to want to go for your company and give you their, their, their hard-earned dollars. I'm going to skip ahead because I want to give you some little nuggets here. Again, is your product also full of future? Well, if you're selling floppy diskettes, probably not. <laughs> 8-track tapes. Um, this is just a quick memo about, about Coke. Remember back in the 80s when they made the change in the recipe and they made the big mistake? And big mistake. And two weeks later, the president of Coke is on the national television apologizing for changing the recipe. They're going to come back with Coke Classic. It was all planned. There's no way they could possibly have the formula out nationwide, have the whole thing repackaged and ready to go, except the fact that they were changing sweeteners. And so it was a diversion tactic to get you not to realize they went from sugar to high fructose corn syrup. So the point is, is that it was all a plan. So sometimes bad press is good press. There's a number of actors that could talk to you about that. But let's talk really quick about target markets. This is really important for all of you. Who's your target market? So I'm going to offend probably some people in this room, just warning you ahead of time. Who's your target market for your product? So if let's say your product is Aquanet, you guys are going, great, what's coming? It's not something I use personally much, but if your target market is, is that, who is, your, who is your key market? Well, the target market for Aquanet probably is someone with a bouffant haircut. Mark Simpson, the Fembots, right? Someone who uses that product. Who's a secondary market for Aquanet? Well, if you're in the Miss America pageants, it's probably keeping your suit stuck. By spraying it. If you guys have been in pageants, you probably know that's to be true. Or they spray it in the bottom of shoes. Who another market might be? Spud guns. You guys know what a spud gun is? Okay, if you're in Thurston County, probably know. <laughs> <laughs> Again, so oftentimes we're so narrow on thinking who we think our market is, we don't realize there's a secondary market or another out, uh, outside of our, of our current thought process. So another thing we think about in business in this economy of ours is... Um, is competition good or bad? And we're so fearful someone's going to move into our area. If competition was bad, the auto mall never would have happened. Why would all the car dealerships in the area, anybody work for the car dealerships in the here all? Okay. Why would we all get to, they all get together? Well, it actually increases business. So when I owned the Body Mechanics School of Myotherapy and Massage, it's in a hospital, right? I had this school, um, and in 10 years' time, I spent a million dollars advertising that school. Sounds like a lot. I gave a lot of it to radio stations and right I spent a lot of money and if you still at the end of 10 years if you ask people if there's a massage school in town maybe 15 percent of the people would say yes but when Seattle massage which became Ashme, which became a number of other companies as it got bought out when they spent millions advertising I was ecstatic I loved it because now people are thinking about going to school and so when Ford puts you know a commercial on for a truck that's a good thing whether you sell Chevy's or whatever company you sell because they're bringing people's awareness to the idea of buying a truck. So competition is an awesome thing, and you want to feed off of that. The question is, how are you different than your competition? And are you able to explain to people the difference right away? And it's not about price. How are we doing? I'm skipping ahead. Um, all right, I'm going to go, because I want to get some stuff for you on webs, web information for you. Oh, there it is. A lot of times people don't know what they want until you show it to them. Nobody knew they wanted an iPod until they made one, right? And so it was a whole different genre or a different product category that didn't exist before. And so in your field, can you think of something that you can devise that no one's ever done before? And once you do that, if you're the first person to market, 
you're going to clean up. So again, but make yourself unique in that process. So back when I was in school, this is why the biggest thing I'm concerned about for businesses and I watch in the news today. And uh, as, uh, as David mentioned, I was part of the Exploring Business Program, geez, more than 10 years ago. And I remember I gave part of this presentation, I'm going to show you in a second, about products. And that comes down to features and benefits. What is it about your product that's a feature versus the benefit of that? And so when I was in school, we had something called cassette decks. These little tapes would spin in circles. And, <laughs> And uh, cassette decks, there's a brand called Nakamichi. And if you had Nakamichi, you were, that was the coolest tech tape deck out there. It was the best quality out there, right? And Nakamichi's could be sound better because they had this automated system to control azimuth error. Doesn't that sound neat? <laughs> Question is, what does azimuth error do? Well, it controls the quality of connection to the tape, which controls the, the quality of the sound, which is what you hear. So as a consumer, you just want to know does it sound good. You don't care about the azimuth error rate. So then the brochure is talking about the azimuth error rate of 0 .00 whatever. Who cares? The question is, does it sound cool, right? And so um, the Sunday paper, let me give you an example of this. This is actually an advertisement from back when I was teaching for the exploring business, $1,500 for this computer from HP. And it, it, it mentions all these things, right? At 128 DDR, all these, these abbreviations. And who buys the computer out of the Sunday paper? No offense, but mostly retired people. They go, well, that looks pretty. Let's buy that. Right? But they don't know what all these letters and initials do. And I said, clear back then, we need to stop talking about the, these, these abbreviations and letters and talk about what it does. And so people basically see German. They don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to them at all. Right? So instead, I said, this is back then, I said, you know, we need to say it's got this much memory, so it can have massive memory to handle multiple tasks. Or it has uh, enormous storage capacity. You can watch movies and grab photos from your camera. It, it has all these things for you, right? I've been saying this for years and years and years. And finally, in this last year, HP started, this is actually from their website, says the HP Pavilion is beautifully designed to fit seamlessly in your home. It quickly accesses front-mounted ports by keeping them hidden. It uh, provides ample storage. It does all these things. They finally stopped talking about the specs and started talking about the benefits. So in your business, what are you doing? to stop talking about the specifications of what you do and start making it about what are you doing for the consumer. And if they can't see the benefit, they're not going to buy your product. And that's the biggest thing now is get that message out there. All right, I'm skipping ahead. Four pieces of marketing, um, product, price, place, and promotion. Um, again, Ash Mead, my competition, spent millions of dollars advertising the Seattle Massage School. And then he decided he wanted to go national, and he changed it to Ash Mead, which was his girlfriend's middle name. Of course, Seattle Massage wouldn't sell any better than Seattle's best coffee. And Chicago Pizza won't sell outside of Chicago, or will it? Right? So once you have a name, you stuck, just stick with it and spend all your money advertising that name, but don't, don't change it mid, midstream. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. Unfortunate names. Yeah. <laughs> they had this AIDS diet candies that would help you lose weight back in the 70s. And uh, you can't see that one coming, but make sure your product is, is good. You also want to recognize ability, so you've got consistency in your marketing and advertising, whether it's your uniforms of your employees clear onto your websites. Uh, make sure it's consistent. Um, this is huge for business owners today. Uh, most of the employees that are coming out of colleges now don't understand profit. They think profit is evil. It's bad. And it's difficult. I actually had a customer call me up and said, you know what? Your, your employee is telling me your wholesale costs. I said, they are? She goes, yeah. And I asked my employee, she goes, well, you're making a profit. I said, well, how do I pay you? Uh. So make sure that you, your employees understand why you're in business and what your whole purpose of businesses is and how that works. And oftentimes, they'll be on the same team and help you out. So I'm going to skip ahead on this a little bit. Um, place speaks a lot about what you do as well. I'm going to skip ahead. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, hope you guys don't mind me skipping because I want to get some really good details before I send you out of here. Um, ethics is in products is huge today. People are so concerned about ethical aspects of your business. And don't feel afraid to advertise what those things are in a roundabout way. Loss versus elation. Um, I see things, this is a, a, to be obnoxious to make a point. But a lot of companies come out there and really try to push their product and, and missell you. But if I told you that Acme Industries cared so much about your safety, they wanted to help you on the road, hands-free sell kit, all the cost was $600, you know, or $6 shipping and handling, and you got this, <laughs> you probably would feel a little upset that you were being misled on what you were getting. So, um, I think the biggest thing right now is people are out there building brands in their business. They're spending a lot of money on building a brand. Please don't waste your money and time on trying to ban brand build. If you've got millions and millions and millions to spend, sure. But if you look at this, these businesses who spend a lot of money, it's going to take a while to go through this. this 
But if you look at these companies, do you know the name brand? Who is this? Right. I'm going to skip really quick because I want to get some web stuff really fast. This was a, a keynote presentation that became a PowerPoint presentation. So, All right. Niche marketing in a sea of competition, you've got to be unique. And um, there we go. <laughs> okay. Where is it at? This is important, too, is that what you think you are, your identity is not your image. I'm going to go backwards real quick. That your image, corporate identity is what you think it is, and your image is what the public thinks it is. And those are two different things oftentimes. All right, know your strengths and weaknesses. Integrate that in. But it takes a number of impressions. Greg will tell you in advertising, or uh, I'll pick on one radio station, sorry, <laughs> is that just because you run one advertisement is not going to make a difference. I sold my, my video I made, Massage with Confidence, years ago in TV Guide magazine. Because we used to actually have a book we look at TV shows in. But, and I spent um, thousands of dollars in one advertisement, right-hand placement, Thursday night lineup with Seinfeld and friends, and $7,500 I spent 20 years ago advertising my, my video in one ad. And I lost my shorts. The entire state of California was on fire with wildfires. People never saw it. They tossed their TV guides out and didn't work. If I had to run one small ad over and over again, that repetition is what makes the difference. So my recommendation for you is whatever you're doing, divide it up, do smaller, and do more consistency in your advertising, uh, especially if that's going to be web advertising. All those things take a time before the person actually understands it. Um, it's a lot like mowing uh, or watering a lawn. This is really important for you. So if you look at your lawn and you've got a certain amount of water to take care of your grass, this is what advertising does for you. So you've got frequency, reach, and saturation. If I've got 10,000 feet of grass and I can give them a quarter inch of water versus 2,500 feet of grass, I can give a whole inch of water, I'm going to have a quarter of my grass doing great versus all of it dying. So don't put all your eggs in one basket in advertising and marketing. If you think you've got the, the trick down and you spend all your money in one, just do it once, you're going to fail. So whether it's Facebook advertising or whether it's radio or uh, whatever you're doing, be consistent with that and make sure it makes a difference. I want to hop ahead. I want to give you this web stuff. and I'm not sure where it's at. Um, uh, hooks are the biggest thing for you in advertising. You've got to stand out with this. You've got to give them a reason to call you. I see so many folks advertising today in the, in the newspapers and whatever they're advertising with, and there's no reason to call. Stop putting ads in there that says that we're here. I, I drive down the road, and I see a sign that says teriyaki or a chiropractor or a massage, and I laugh. It's like, why would I pull my car over? Why would I want to help, you know, why would I want to stop my car? This is a compelling reason to pull my car over, something unique and different that that person's offering. And if you're not offering them a reason to go to action to make a difference today, it's not going to work for you. Um, all right, how much time do I got? 30 seconds, okay. I want to, this is not on the, on the screen, so forgive me. But I want to talk about websites really, really fast. Is if you guys have a website, which I hope you do, um, I hope you have a reason for people to call you. Stop making your websites into billboards. People come to your website and they want information, but the number one thing you can do is have a video on your website that talks about what it is that you do. So if you, for example, you go to the Growing Your Business in the New Economy website, so a web video right there that greets them. Whether you're the Chamber of Commerce, whatever you're at, stop having static information on the site and start having video that introduces people. That's the future of websites. It's got to have video. It's got to have information that's fresh and new, and it's got to change. So don't be afraid to make little videos. Have those on there, whether you're using your iPhone or whatever brand of phone you've got. That's high def. You know, make a video and make a product video. People can start to see your company versus just see static information for you on there. Um, and... Uh, I'm getting that look, so <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up. We have a, a program. It's all day long in Seattle. At the bottom of your handout, is a code. You can come for half price, just 99 bucks in Seattle. Uh, Tony McNamara is here this morning. He's going to be talking about marketing and business, on how to sell anything to anyone. We've got people talking about how to make your business run from the iCloud, uh, not iCloud, but from the cloud. We've got people talking about image consulting, um, people talking about how to use network and social media to your advantage. A lot of good information in that one-day program. So that's going to be coming up October 8th in Seattle. And so I'd love to have you guys all come for half price as my friends. So anyway, there's a lot more information on there uh, in your handout, even some details I didn't talk about. So it's nice to meet you all. Thank you.